Okay, let's go ahead and pick up where we left off last time because we need to customize the layout a little bit and I left some things unfinished like the front and back cover as well as this kind of missing image right here. So first let's talk about the front and back cover. Um, I'm just going to quickly right mouse click there and say zoom the photo to fit the cell. But all of a sudden I'm realizing that there's actually no place to put any text on this layout. So let's actually zoom in a little bit. So command R so that I can see the double page spread here for my front and back cover. And then I'm going to select from the different covers. And I actually like this cover. It's, it's almost all the way at the bottom, but it allows me to put a full bleed photo and then some text on it. And there's another photo on the back and it'll show me, it'll allow me to show you a few extra things. But look at some of these other cool kind of more creative. If you want to put a lot of pictures on the cover of your book, you can choose this template. Um, there's some templates that are a little bit more text heavy, like the one down here. And you can also enter information on the spine of your book. But for now, let's go ahead and select this. It's a little simple, but that's okay. You can see I've got my full page bleed, but that's not actually the photo that I want. So I'm just going to quickly scroll here and find the image that I do want on the cover and then just drag and drop it. Again, now that it dragged and dropped it, I, my preference is set to fit it. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom the photo and just scoot that over. And now I've got this area to enter in type. So let's say I want to enter in the type Venice, Italy. Now it's a little bit small there, but we can see it. Let's go to our type panel here and we'll go ahead and increase the character. Now it looks like the last time I was in here, I had my justification set to the right. So let's go ahead and set it to the left. Well, actually let's set it in the middle there and let's decrease the size a little bit so it just fits there. Now I can move this up and down by using the cell panel right here by changing the padding. Now by default they're all linked but I can unlink that and then I'm just going to move the top slider down a little bit and you can see how I'm moving the text within that space. So at first it might appear that you don't have a lot of control but you actually have quite a bit of control not only with your text and moving it around in the cell, you can do the exact same thing in a photo which we'll do in a few minutes. All right, let's go to the back cover. Again, I'm going to zoom the photo to fill and then I can scoot that over exactly where I want it. Then I'll just enter in some text here. I happen to have like just my short bio copied to the clipboard. So we can go ahead and paste that in. And then again, we can select all of that type, come down to our type panel. Let's go ahead and decrease the character. I want to go ahead and align that to the left. And you'll notice that I can do a lot of other things as well, right? It's not just size and opacity and character. I can change the color of the type. I can change the amount of tracking, the baseline shift, the letting, the kerning. You might not see all of this by default, but there's a little disclosure triangle right here. You want to make sure that you click on that and that will reveal all these additional options. We can also add different columns. So if I wanted to split this into two columns, I could, and I can choose how much of a gutter I want in between those columns. I could change the padding in here. So so you can see that I can really customize this text. And if there are certain settings that you really like, what I would do is once you've got all of your text attributes set up, just come right up here where it says textile presets and save them as a new preset. And that way you never have to come back here and do it. You can just pick your preset. In fact, that was the preset you can see right up there. I've got that Myriad regular at nine point. That's the preset that I had selected when I imported the files, right? Using the auto layout, I had chosen that for my captions. All right, excellent. Let's zoom back out a little bit more and let's take care of this problem right here. We can see that we have a photo that's missing. So I have one of two things I can do. I can just simply drag and drop another photo in there or I could change the layout. And since there's one photo there already, let's just do that. I'm going to come here, modify the page, pick the one photo area, grab that and then right mouse click, zoom to fit and just scoot that over a little bit until I like the way it's positioned. So you can see there's a lot of flexibility. It's very easy for me to go in and change things. Let's scoot down a little bit more. There are four images right here. And what I'd like to do is kind of put all four of them on one page. That's very easy to do as well, right? We'll just switch this to four photos. I can pick from any of these options. Let's select this one because we haven't done anything that has a full bleed yet. And let's also zoom in here so we can see that. Now you'll notice I didn't go to that page. I went to the double page spread because all I'm going to do is take this image right here and just drag and drop those two images. Now I no longer need this page so I can just right mouse click and say remove page and all the rest of the pages will reflow automatically. 
Now, let's select all of these images right here, right? So I've got my shift key held down, I selected all of them, right mouse click, and zoom the photos to fit the cell. If I need to, I can rearrange where these are being cropped very quickly. And you know what else I'm going to do? I actually want to change, make a change to these in the develop module. So let's scoot over to the develop module and let's go ahead and make the first change to the image. And I'm going to do that just with a preset to make things go quickly. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this has been converted to grayscale and then I'm going to add a sepia tone to this. Now I want to apply these same settings to all of the rest of the images. So let me quickly just find those down here. I'm just going to navigate. Here's one of them. So we can do auto and sepia with this one as well. And scooting through, there's a third one, auto and sepia. And I have one more to find. I'm just scrolling through my film strip. There's the last one, auto black and white and sepia. Excellent. Now when I return back to the book module, all of those have been updated. So whatever changes you make to your original images in the develop module, all of those changes will be updated in the book file. Okay, let's zoom in on just this page for a moment because you'll see two things that I don't like. I don't like the captions and I also don't like that each one of the images is actually butting right up against each other. I would actually like to add just a wee bit of spacing, but I don't want to add quite as much spacing as maybe these templates have. So how would I do that? Well, first, it's really easy. If I want to select all of the text on a single page, all I need to do is use this keyboard shortcut, which is Command Shift A or Control Shift A. It will select all the text on this page. If I had a double page spread, it would select all the text on the double page spread. If I was looking at the entire book, it would select all the text in the entire book. So the reason that I want to do this is I want to come over here and control my caption. I just want to turn it off. I don't want those captions on top of each one of those images. Now, I'm going to need to select each one of these images differently if I want to add a little gutter around each one. So I will unlink the padding and on this one I just need to add on the right hand side I might want to add maybe a little gutter of say five points and at the bottom I want to do the same thing. Then we'll go to the second image. Again, I'm going to unlink everything and this time I need to make sure that I add maybe five points to the left side and I need to add five points again to the bottom. Then we'll move to the image in the lower left, unlink everything and now I need to add five points to the top and five points to the right hand side. Finally, I'll move to the last image and here again I just need to unlink all of these and make sure that I'm adding five points to the top and then also five points in this case to the left hand side. So you might be asking yourself why didn't I just select them all and add the same amount of padding. What that does is it actually would have made a smaller edge on the outside and it would have doubled the columns in between and so I just think visually this looks a little bit better. So let's take a look at that at the double page spread. Excellent. Now let's take a look at the different guides here just to make sure that we all understand what it is we're seeing. So around the edges, this gray area here at the very top and outside, that's going to be your page bleed. So you have to be aware that some of that area might be cut off a little bit when they're actually cutting the paper to bind the book. We have a title safe area. That's this other gray line here. We have our photo cells that are outlined. Um, let's say for example if I delete this image right here, that's the photo cells. We can turn that on and off and we have our filler text that we can turn on and off. All right, let's just drag that back in there for a minute. And we can turn all of those on and off with keyboard shortcuts. If we go here under the view menu, you can see show guides as command shift G or control shift G and here are all of the individual ways to turn on and off all the different options in your guides. Now let's return back to our multi-page view because I just want to make it really clear that everything we're doing in here is automatically being saved. So once you save your original book and you can see that book over here as part of your collections, everything you do to it is being saved. So there's no need to like resave or save as you move along because everything is being automatically saved for you. But that does tell you that if you wanted to go off in some like completely different direction, what you might want to do is duplicate the book. 
right? And that's super easy. All you have to do is hold down the Option key or the Alt key and simply click and drag the book wherever you want to duplicate it to. So in this case, we could duplicate it right in the same collection. We could duplicate it in the collection set wherever you want um, and just let go and it will duplicate that. And then if you wanted to, you could go ahead and rename that and then take off in another direction. And the reason that I say that is because we have been doing or creating a book that's very, very simple, but I also wanted to kind of show you an example of maybe a book that's a little bit more complex like this one right here. Now, I'm not going to take the time to actually create this book. I just want to point a few things out. So first of all, let's go to page three here, and you'll notice that there is quite a bit of text here. So what I wanted to show you is if you select all of your text and we come down here to the type panel, you'll notice there's a targeted adjustment tool for type. So I can actually click on the targeted adjustment tool, and if I click right on the type and drag up or down, you'll notice that it's changing the letting. And if I click and drag left to right, you can see that it's actually changing the size of the text. So you do need to let go in between, right? So you have to click and drag up and down to change the letting, let go, and then click and drag left and right to change the size. But I just think that's a really cool feature, so I wanted to make sure that I showed you that. Let's go ahead and go back to our double page spread view and just thumb through a few of these. Now, this is great. This is actually one image on a double page spread. And we can see here, if we click and we go to our layouts, that not only can we put a single two, three, or four photos per page, we can put more than that in the multiple photo area. I mean, look at this. We've got some great grids that we can use. We've got some great like little film strip edges that you can use. You can also have these two page spreads or double page spreads where you can have a single image that crosses over the gutter and actually spans more than one side. So it's not just a left or right only. And you can see that we have all of these different options here. Now, we also have some kind of heavier text templates that you can use. And we also have favorites, which we will talk about in the next uh, video of the series. There's clean pages, which is basically just a collection of the templates that we've already looked at, but they're kind of grouped together in like this more clean look versus creative look, which has most of the different edges on them. We've got like this portfolio look, a travel look, and a wedding look. But again, these categories right here are really just kind of groups of all of the different page layouts that you'll see above. So it depends on, on how you want to um, view them. All right, so I don't want to actually change it. I like this double page spread as it is. Well, unfortunately, that's all I have time for in this video. However, in the next video, we will be talking about some even more advanced features. So I hope you'll join me. Thanks for watching.